Welcome everybody. According to my computer, it says we are live, so let's just test it out, okay? So if you can hear me, will you go ahead and drop in the chat where you're from so that I can say hello to you. I see several people. I see a friend, uh, Rosina from Germany, and I hope I'm saying your name correctly. I see Deneen from Illinois. I see Heather and Christine and Brenda and Anna. So I see quite a bit of people out there. I see Eve got here nice and early. So welcome to everyone who is here. Hi everybody, my name is Yvonne. If this is the first time that you are watching the Jelly Roll Club, this is month three of the Table Runner of the Month. And so if you want to go back and do the previous ones, they're gonna be available. They've already been posted to the channel. So this is month three. It's technically February, but we are working on March. That way you can finish your Table Runner in time for the next month and get it posted to your table. I have been listening to everything that people comment and reading the things, the messages that people send me. And so one of the things that I have done is I've made um, each of these patterns a little bit more flexible so you can adjust them to your table size. So I got a few things to tell you. First of all, uh, it does take a little while to make some of these. That's why it's, it's easier now that they're a month apart but um, I've started my collection of UFOs for this project. So you can see there's my January placemat. I've got several that I have to bind. So they're hanging now on what I'm calling the UFO board right behind me. I made a couple of sample blocks out of the heart um, log cabin that we did for February. And so now I have these two uh, homeless blocks and they're gonna get put together into mug rugs or something else. So we'll see what I make with that. And then I also have a leftover Dresden and a wall hanging that I need to bind. And so everything that you see behind me are UFOs that I'm hanging right behind me so that I'm constantly looking at them and it'll force me to finish them. So if you have UFOs, you can go ahead and confess now how many UFOs you have. Let us know in the chat how many UFOs you have. But anyway, happy Sunday. I know UFOs are not my favorite, so I'm trying to get as many of them done as possible. And we are going to have a sew date later on tonight. So if you are not part of the private Jelly Roll Club meeting room, it is a Facebook space that has a link. And so if you're part of that group and you requested admission or you were invited at um, six o'clock this evening, I'm gonna click on the link and make the room live. And I'll be in there working on my UFOs. So if you want to join us for that later on tonight, you can. All right, friends, it is 2 o'clock and let's get started because this uh, table runner is not going to make itself, okay? All right, so before we get started, um, let me just show you. You should have had this handout and this handout is available on the website at www.jellyrollclub.com. I've also pinned it at the top, so if you don't uh, have this, you can find it in the chat stream. It's pinned at the top. Um, I posted a cutting and supply list a couple of weeks ago, and I gave you guys these supplies, and that supply list will get you a nice big table runner that is 62 by 12. Now, you can adjust that to any size um, because these are 12 by 12 blocks. You can make two. Um, for your table and make it 24. You can just keep adding. You can make it 36 and do three. So depending on the size of your table, you can adjust it. If you have a square table, you can put two side by side. So you can do four of them and make a nice big square and make it 24 by 24. So this is a very adjustable pattern, which is why I gave you the cutting guide for one block. So when I posted that, that is the reason why it gave you a cutting guide for one block and not for all of the blocks. So that's just a little bit of um, business. So for one block, you're gonna need a one square of white or light background. You could do the reverse. You could do a dark background and then do a light clover. So this is Lady Luck, that's the name of this block. If you want uh, to make these out of a single color, these little clover pieces, you can use five inch squares or you can do eight scraps from jelly roll, leftover jelly roll strips and you can sew them together like this. 
So I sewed jelly roll strips together. I did not use a scant quarter inch. I used a nice big fat quarter inch and I pressed it open to reduce the bulk. And this is how I did my clover pieces. So for this one that says four or five inch squares, I made mine out of jelly roll strips. This is the jelly roll club after all. Then you needed four two and a half by three and a half inch pieces for your petals, which are these pieces right here. And then one strip of sashing, um, which was two and a half inches by 42. Um, and I suggested that you cut and trim after the fact. So this is mine. I decided for my little petals to use orange because that is the Irish flag and that was a suggestion of a friend of mine. So thank you Angie for the suggestion. I like how this orange gives it a little bit of pop. So let me show you the block and then, me, then I'm going to show you how I put it together. Okay, so this is an applique block. For those of you who are scared of applique, my suggestion is that you start with fusible applique and that is the method that I did for this particular block. So let me show you how I got started. So let me set aside all of this other stuff. And so the first thing that I did for my fusible applique is I simply took a Sharpie and I traced this uh, shape right here. Then I also traced this shape right here, but I blunted the corner because I wanted to reduce the bulk in the middle. And so if you look at the back of my uh, paper, you see that with a Sharpie, when you trace, it bleeds to the back. And so it makes it a whole lot easier when you lay a piece of fusible web on there for you to be able to see right through that and just trace it with a pencil. And I always leave a little margin. And so this has a paper side and a bumpy side. And then you're just going to iron this to the back of your fabric. So for mine, once I had it uh, nice and pressed, and I'm going to give it another little press just to make it flat. And I press it from both sides because I want that seam to be as flat as possible. I let it cool. And then I used these little marks on my block right here. If you notice, I have center marks. I line those up carefully with that split in my fabric and so I just lined it up so that it would lay like this and you're gonna have to read the instructions on your particular brand of fusible web on mine it says um, about 15 seconds I just kinda look at it and once it turns transparent like that and you can see through it then it works just fine I'm gonna let it cool down just a second before I cut that out. And I did the same for these little guys. A seam ripper is handy for this because you can just score it and remove the paper. So you have to take the paper off of all of these pieces in order to get them ready to fuse down. And for my fusible on the back, I have used a Pellon uh, Wonder Under and it's the light, the light, light, light version. Okay. So this is nice and cool now. As you can see, can you see the transparent line that goes through there? One of the easiest ways to cut this is to stick your um, seam ripper in one of these sides and it'll get it started. And so when you do that, you can cut out a shape that looks like this. You can do either side. You can make them light side on one side and you'll have a piece that's left over like this. And as you can see, I made mine going different directions. So I have a whole stack of these here. And they have the paper on the back. So some of them go to the left and some of them go to the right like this. But I had all these leftover bits that come from the center of these blocks. And I'm going to show you at the end what I'm going to do with these because I'm not going to waste them. So I cut enough to make uh, four blocks for my table runner. I'm going to set them aside. And like I said, the easiest way to start this is literally just take your seam ripper, a nice sharp seam ripper, and give it a start. And then you'll be able to stick your applique scissors in there. And it doesn't take long at all to cut these out. 
and I stop right where that seam is. You can see right through there. Try not to watch television while you do this so that they're not crooked. And then I come back the other direction and I stop right at my point because what I want is for that seam down at the bottom to end up right where that seam is. And so there I have my uh, part of my lady luck. And now I'm gonna trim the outside. So first I did the inside and now I'm gonna do the outside and it doesn't take long at all to cut these out. Now, when you're using fusible web, you're gonna to have to treat your sewing machine a little bit different. I use an extra sharp Microtex needle because I'm piercing through that glue and I'm also piercing through my fabric and I'm piercing through several layers. So one of the things that I do is I use a Microtex needle. And so that is super important. So they look like this. Um, and it just says Microtex right on there, and I'm using an 8012. Um, one of the things that I also do is I add a tiny bit of sewing machine oil to the needle itself. I just kind of rub the shaft every so often to keep the gummy stuff from sticking to my needle. And so that also helps. I'm going to use a little bit of fray check because I don't want uh, my starts and stops to fray. So I use a little bit of fray check and that just keeps everything really pretty. All right, so this is how you prepare your pieces. They're all done the same, so I'm not gonna have you sit here and watch me. But then the next thing that you have to do after you sew all of these together and you cut all of your pieces is you start laying out your block, right? I started out with a nine inch square and I'm gonna fold it into fourths. So you're just gonna take it you're gonna fold it into fourths just like this. And you're gonna use your fingernails to create these creases down here, just like that. Super simple. And what it does is it allows you to center your design just like that. Can you guys see that line? Sometimes it's hard to see, so let me zoom in and let me try to auto, there it goes. So there's a line now in the middle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lay my design underneath this so that I can kind of see through it. So you guys can see, I will lay my design right underneath it so that I have uh, the ability to center that. So there I have it. Now I'm going to sew or fuse all of these petals first. And if you notice, remember I said I blunted the ends because I don't want all that bulk in the middle. So for this particular block, the first thing that I'm gonna do is just stick all of these on here and fuse them down first and stitch them before I do anything else. And so I'm gonna lay that here. And I'm just using the design underneath as a layout guide. You don't have to have fancy tools to make this. We're trying to get finished uh, projects, not perfect projects. And so I promise you, if you make these and give them away to somebody, they're gonna love them because you made them. So don't stress too much about this process. All right, so there they go, right? They go laid out like this. I'm gonna line up these points with the top like this and that line that I have on the sides. And that's why I did that is to center my design. Once I lay that down, then I can lay a pressing cloth on top or I can just use a little bit of parchment paper like this and lay that on top so that I can press it. So this is just parchment paper. I'm gonna carefully lay it on top like this so as to not move my design. and I'm gonna press it just like that. And I can carefully move that pressing sheet, just double checking that nothing shifted. 
And I use a pressing sheet because what I don't want is for my iron to stick to any uh, fusible adhesive. So once I get this down like this, if you notice, I'm not putting a ton of heat on here because I don't want to kill the fusible. If you leave the iron on there too hot, the pieces will start to come up. So now I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch all the way around these pieces before I lay my next pieces on top and sew. So if you notice on here, I stitched all of these all the way down to the end before I put my clovers on top and stitch them. As you can see, there's a little bit of thread. And the reason I did that, I just used a regular blanket stitch. There's no interfacing on the back of my block. This fabric is lightly starched. And you can still see the lines. And this is what my block is going to look like when I get it finished. Am I making sense? So how do I sew this? If you are using a blanket stitch, you start here, you pivot, and you come over. So let me show you on my sewing machine how I do that. So on my sewing machine, I have an extra wide uh, open toe foot so that I can see in the middle. And then I simply take this right where it's at, and I'm using a variegated green thread and lining it up with the settings on my um, sewing machine. Let me get this little leader and ender out of the way. I'm going to sew. So I set it on my stitch. I'm going to sew all the way up and then all the way down. Just like this. As I sew this, I want to sew and catch the edge of this and I want part of my blanket stitch on here and the other part to just barely ride the edge of this. Um, leaf and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about in just a second. If your sewing machine has a needle down function, you can engage the needle down function and it makes it easier to pivot. Just pivot. That end right there is always a little bit tricky for me. Sometimes I end up kind of chopping it off. So I try to pivot at just the right point. So sometimes I just readjust it with my hand and then I rotate that once I get to the very tip of that particular block. And it just kind of keeps it neater that way. There we go. Just kind of watch that so that it doesn't lift on you. Okay, so that is how you sew these on. I use the same thread in the bobbin that I have on the upper portion of my machine. Here, let me pull this off so you can see. Just use the cutter. Let me bring this over so you can see. So I came down with my blanket stitch, stopped, and then came this way. If you notice, it's not puckering, and it doesn't have any uh, interfacing on the back. But from the back, I will take a little drop of fray check and just drop it right on there, because what I don't want is for that to fray on me later on. So I don't like to back stitch when I applique with blanket stitch, and so I just use a tiny bit of fray check on those ends to keep them from fraying and I'll trim those later. So once I have stitched that, right, 
I'm going to lay my design back down. And I'm lining all of these up again to make sure that they fit exactly like they're supposed to. And now I can take this one and I can lay it here. But I will sew all of these first and then I will lay these down, fuse them to the, uh, to the background and then I will sew all of them on the sewing machine. And like I said, these can go light, light, dark, dark. They can go all the same. You decide, but you're gonna lay these in here where they're all kind of touching in the middle. And then you stitch all the way around just like I did this one right here. And if you notice, I just kind of traveled from here, went around, traveled, went around, traveled, did the same thing, traveled, went around, and I never lifted uh, my needle. I just did the entire thing in one swoop, and you can see my traveling lines here in the middle. All right, friends, does anybody have any questions on how I built this particular portion of the block? Okay, now let's talk about the sashing, right? So if you're gonna put long sashings on here, my sashings are two and a half inches wide, and these blocks, once they're ready, are ready to be trimmed. You can leave them big like this if you like. This is a nine inch square, or you can trim it down because in the image, Lady Luck is kind of really tight against the sashing. If you wanna do it like this, you can trim it down. Or if you wanna leave a little bit of space for some quilting, you can leave it that way as well. It will change the size of your block a little bit. But let's talk about sashing that doesn't have wavy edges, okay? So sashing is an important thing to understand. When I cut my sashing strips, I do not cut them from selvage to selvage, like a lot of people tend to do. You can um, do it that way, but my preferred way of cutting my fabric is always parallel to the fold. So if you look at my fabric, this is the fold, right? And so what I do is instead of cutting it this way, I opened my fabric and I cut the selvages off and I cut my strips. See how this is the stretchy side? That's from, that's from selvage to fold this way. I took and I folded it the other way because there's almost no stretch. So if I pull on this, there's, there's almost no stretch at all. And so what that does is when you have sashing strips that are cut parallel to the selvage, you get these strips that will not stretch on you like this. See how there's almost zero stretch? How I join these together is using a 45 degree seam. So I took all my sashes in order to make them long enough and I just laid it like this and I drew a line from corner to corner. And then I will simply press that open like this so that it lays nice and flat. And I try to hide my seam line as much as possible. It also reduces the bulk. Just like that. And so if you notice, you can barely see that line and it reduces the bulk on there so that when I'm quilting, I don't have a big bulky horizontal seam. But I'm simply gonna take for this particular block, I'm going to measure my block in the middle and then I'm going to cut my sashing strips on two sides and I'm gonna sew them on and then I'm gonna leave the tops and the bottoms um, unsewn like this, and then I'm gonna attach a long, long, long strip once I have these blocks that have a strip on either side, the left and the right. So first, I sew a strip on either side like this, and that is my block, like this. And then to put this entire thing together, I will sew one long continuous uh, 
border across the top and the bottom of these blocks once I get them put together. Does anybody have any questions about this block? Okay, so that's the Lady Luck block. And now let me show you what I did with all of my little leftover bits because I hate to waste fabric. I'm not a waster. So let me show you what you can do. If you have little bits of fabric that are six and a half inches square, like these, and these are leftovers, you can take four of these little guys on a six and a half inch square and you can build, and you can see those, you can build another shamrock. So you can build yourself a bonus shamrock And you can even use the other leftover bits. Just look at, look at that, how cute that's gonna look. You can use all of the other leftover bits to make yourself a stem. Now people have asked me this before, like what if I live in an area where they don't have fusible web available? And so I'm gonna show you here in just a minute what you can do if you do not have fusible web. So just give me one second to get this last leaf on there. So as you can see, I'm building a shamrock my little bonus block here out of my bits that I already had. So this is just extra, right? Don't let these little bits go to waste. And so now my shamrock is going to require a stem. So I'm going to take these little bits that I have um, left over from the cutaways and I can actually take this right here with my very sharp scissor, I'm gonna get rid of that little bit of fusible that it's on there. And I'm gonna take my very sharp scissor and I can just cut that. And it only has a little bit of fusible on there, so if you don't have fusible where you are, you don't have access to it, the easiest thing that you can use for this particular block is simply gonna be a little bit of washable school glue So you can take some of this children's washable school glue. This is the gel type. And you can literally take this little piece here and just put a few dabs of it, not a lot. And you can make yourself a little shamrock. So you're gonna put the little stem there. Then lay these on top to hide the little juncture where that's going. And I'm going to trim this off so that it has a little bit of room for stitching all the way around. And now I can take my pressing cloth, lay it on top. You can even use just a plain piece of white paper, but you can just take your little parchment cloth and lay it on top. like that and I'm going to press the entire thing down like this and I'll be able to sew all the way around using either a straight stitch or a blanket stitch or another type of decorative stitch. And this is a six and a half inch square, and I'm just using my leftovers. Look at that right there. Isn't that cute? I'm gonna give it one press with a hot iron. And now I can bring this over to the machine, and I'm gonna start stitching here and come down, go all the way around the outside, and then come down the insides. And so I'm gonna be able to use this as like a little mug rug I can take a little bit of my uh, border print and sew it all the way around. And that is gonna be a cute little bonus mug rug. So I have enough of this so that I can, you can even miter the corners. If you watched the Penny the Penguin video, you know how to miter the corners. And I can build 
a little mug rug using my leftovers. And so that was my little aha moment, my little bonus block that I made using my pieces that were just cutaways from the shamrock. All right, friends, the next thing that I put in your pattern is a special bonus. So if you look at your pattern, there was some other stuff in there. And so if you noticed, I put um, a little basket. Remember it said sweet little basket and it had this flower. There's gonna be a whole video on the daffodil because I'm gonna be adding this one to my Dresden quilt. So this is a separate video that I'm gonna be making. But this one here, if you watched my sunflower pin cushion and thread catcher, this little basket is made exactly the same way. And there's a little bunny that goes on here, but the bunny will be made slightly differently. So the first thing that I did for my basket is I built it just like I did um, the, the, the thread catcher. So if you watch the thread catcher, you know what that looks like. I took all of the leftover bits from the, from the a quilt project that I had. I had a scrap basket and I couldn't stand to give up all these little bits of fabric. So as you can see, they go every direction. They're little triangles, little squares, and I stitched them all together and I made myself like big pieces of fabric and I used those to cut out my pieces. And so my pieces for these were two rectangles that were 10 by 16 and then I had a lining that was 10 by 16. I stitched my main fabric with um, a nice generous half inch and the same with this one. I used batting and I used fusible web because I'm gonna add bunnies to this. So you can see this is lined, right? And this is what the basket looks like on both sides. And this basket is gonna have handles. So I'm gonna give this to my granddaughter and it's gonna be her little Easter basket this year. So that is the bonus project. So if you wanna know how to make this little basket, you're just gonna to have to watch the, the video on the thread catcher because that's the same exact way I made this one. And then for the bunny, to make the little bunny, you can trace it onto fusible web like this, or you can simply put fusible web down on the entire back, and then take a little bit of cardstock, which is one of my favorite ways of using up uh, pieces is take a little bit of cardstock and just trace that little um, bunny on there. So you can take a bunny, you can cut the bunny out and trace it down and it gives you that little thing. So let me move this out of the way and let me show you my little bunny. Too many things in the way here while I'm trying to sew. So I just took my bunny, I cut it out. This has fusible on both pieces because I'm going to fuse it to itself, just like this. So it has fusible on both sides. I'm going to peel this off. And I'm going to take and I'm going to stick it together. And so you'll just measure your bunny. Uh, this bunny measures, so if you look on here, you need a five inch uh, piece and he is about three inches wide. So three inches by five inches. So you just double that. And then you push it together like this. You iron these two bits on both sides. That gives you a nice uh, stiff piece to work with. It's double-sided, so now the fabric is fused to itself. And I simply take, and I cut out my bunny because I'm going to trace it on there. So I leave a tiny margin on there. Not much, but a tiny bit. If you have those fancy cutting machines, like a brother scan and cut, you can trace these um, and you can see it through the back of the image and your scan, your brother scan and cut will cut those. 
I use just simple basic tools because I like to save money for my fabric. And so I just use a little bit of leftover cardboard from those charm packs that we all love to buy because I'm a pre-cutaholic. So if you're in the Jelly Roll Club, welcome to Jelly Roll Hoarders. We are not going to try to talk you out of buying Jelly Rolls. We're going to teach you how to use them. All right, friends, does anybody have any questions so far about how I'm making all of these bits? All right. So now that I have my little bunny cut out, I'll lay him straight on here. And then I'm just going to take a little pen. You can use a pencil if you, if you want to be careful. Like I use big giant school pencils. And just trace because you're going to be cutting that off anyway. So you're, you've got a little bit of excess, right? When my kids were little, they loved peeps. And so this is homage to my children. I have a little peep right there. Peeps are not really for eating, they're for decorating because they're not super tasty. But they're cute nonetheless. Those are candies that are available here in the US. I don't know if they make peeps in, in other places. Do they make peeps where you're from? So for our friends from Germany and Australia and all over the world, do they have peeps where you are? I know we have a bunch of friends in the Jelly Roll Club there in Costa Rica. And this is why you have these little sharp scissors and go into these sharp corners just like that. So you just turn it. I use either my little tiny duckbill applique scissors or my serrated for these little jobs because it helps to go in those tight corners. All right. And so now what I have is a double-sided bunny, just like this. So if you notice, my bunny is the same on both sides. And what I'm gonna do with this bunny is I'm gonna attach him, he has little buttons, to the side of my basket, just like this. And I'm gonna put little buttons for his face, and then I'm gonna put handles on my basket. So my little basket will have three little bunnies, one, two, and three across here, and then I'm gonna give this to my granddaughter. So that's what I did with my scraps. I hope you like this, friends. It is 2.38. Um, if you have any questions about the table runner, if you have any questions about the basket, just applique or fusible in general, just let me know and I will be happy to share some of our tips and tricks. If you have tips and tricks for any newbies, you can go ahead and drop those in the chat and that would be awesome. Otherwise, let me see, let me look at, at what questions people have. Uh, my sashing fabric is called stained glass. So this sashing fabric is called stained glass. I love how it looks. And I found it online. I'm pretty sure I bought it at Joann's. It feels nice and thick. It's not your typical Joann's fabric. So I, I bought it. So I, I jumped on there and got it because it was really cute. And let me see. Um, what else did people ask about? Um, what size are the leaves? So the leaves that I cut out, if you notice on the um, handout, the leaves, are, you need pieces that are two and a half inches by three and a half inches for the leaves, right? Yeah, most definitely use um, a little bit of oil on a cotton ball and oil that needle. Every so often you can stop and just clean your needle and it keeps your, your stuff from gumming up. Um, I also put um, a little bit of uh, some of this sewing machine oil on a Q-tip and made sure that my feed dogs were oiled and everything so that it, it does, and, it, and don't soak it, but just put a, enough of a coating so that it doesn't gum up and it will not stick to your stuff. So it works really, really well. All right. 
Did I print the pattern on inkjet or laser? Um, I would be concerned with the laser toner transferring to the back of my block. Um, I print mine on a laser printer, not an inkjet. Um, and I don't press necessarily on top. If you want to put parchment paper on here or a pressing cloth in between. So I have like a Teflon pressing cloth. And I also have parchment paper. So if you want to put parchment paper, you can always put the pattern like this. So if you're concerned about your toner ink getting on there, you can just slip it inside the, the, the parchment paper just like that. And one sheet of parchment paper folded in half covers that. And so it won't get on your pressing surface and it will not get on your um, fabric that way. So if you're concerned about toner ink, that's my solution, friends. Let's see, what other questions do we have? All right, I don't see, is that a walking foot or just an open toe foot? That is an open toe foot, not a walking foot. Um, and the type of fusible that I used is Pellon Ultralight. Here, let me pull the, the package. So my favorite is just uh, Pellon 805 and it's just a fusible and it's an ultralight. And like I said, if you don't have fusible, you can always use children's washable school glue. So if you don't have fusible, you can glue all your pieces down with this. You can cut them out, starch them well. So if you do not have fusible, start your fabric heavy and then glue them down with a glue stick. So if you don't have fusible, don't panic. I know that some people are out in places where you, you may not have access to fusible. So if you do it that way, it'll still work. So starch plus glue equals fusible. And see, yeah, I will put a link. I will find it again online to my sashing fabric and I'll put a link on the Jelly Roll Club website so you guys can see that. All right, friends, this is it. Um, please go ahead and give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to make yourself a cute little bonus basket. Mine's gonna have handles. I'm gonna post it when I'm done. Like I said, mine's gonna have little rabbits on it like this so that my granddaughter can enjoy it for Easter. I'm gonna put her Easter surprise in here. And so it's gonna have little handles and little bunnies and it'll be ready for Easter. But other than that, if you guys don't have any more questions, I just wanna thank you for joining us. Download the free pattern, make yourself some beautiful things. Join us in the Jelly Roll Club meeting room later on tonight. And so if you're interested in chatting with me or asking me questions in person, you can join me tonight. So don't forget, get started, hit that like down there, share this video with your friends if you have any friends that missed it. And if you're watching the Daytona 500, I think you only missed like 15 minutes. All right, friends, I'll talk to you guys later. Lots of blessings. I will see you guys soon. I will post on the Jelly Roll Club website and on the page our next uh, series of lessons. I've got to work on all my UFOs. Look at all this stuff I have back here. I have two hearts. I have another uh, table runner. And I've got to put a binding on my penguin stuff. So I've got a lot of work ahead of me. All right, friends. It was so great of you to join me. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful Sunday. Bye-bye, everybody. It is uh, 6 p.m. Eastern time that I will be in the meeting room. 6 p.m. Eastern time tonight. So from 6 to 8. All right, friends, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. If you enjoy the races, get out there and uh, enjoy the races with your family. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye, friends.